Hey guys, welcome back to a Sunday night show. We're recording this on Friday night, so grab yourself a drink and let's get right into it. Bank of America is basically identifying um, our current situation as a bubble and says that investors should sell stocks rather than buy them after the last rate hike. So there's a lot of merit into what Bank of America has to say here, and I'm in total agreement here. You know, for the longest time in, in the stock market and trading, there was the TINA trade. Uh, TINA standing for there is no alternative. And what that means is when all interest rates are at zero, when, you're lo when you put your money in a bank at zero, when you go to buy bonds or treasury bonds, they're all at zero. You don't have an alternative uh, to put your money. And for that reason, people end up being forced to put their money in the stock market. I just want to go into and talk a little bit about this U.S. three-month treasury ju just for one second to kind of show where the rate was at before. Is that 0% before, and it shot up to about 5%, this uh, a three-month treasury um, from the U.S. government. But that's, that's not all. You know, uh, you as a local retail investor can buy this I-bond from treasurydirect.gov. And this Series I savings bond is actually giving a 6.89% return. That's a huge difference. That, the, the, the whole scenario of uh, what to buy in the market, what, what to sell, you don't have to worry about all that in the stock market anymore. The stock market, on average, returns 7% long term, you're going to get a 7% uh, return, but you have to deal with some jaw-dropping swings at times in order to get that 7% return versus buying a Series I savings bond at 6.89%. Uh, you know, if you're a hedge fund, you're buying a lot of these treasury bills and things like that. And for that reason, I totally agree with this Bank of America article. Sai, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, like, how are you positioning yourself here? Just to be clear, like uh, the thing about these I bonds and the high interest rate is there is a cap of, I believe, ten thousand dollars a year that you can invest into this. Very attractive, I think, to the vast majority of Americans that don't have a lot of money to invest in the stock market. Now, that might not be your target audience. We're talking about the overall market. I think these fixed low risk investments are going to suck money out of the stock market. And it doesn't even have to be this kind of savings bond. You're going to start seeing banks offer more than the 0.01% interest rate we've seen for the last 10 years. And you probably haven't heard this term in 20 years, uh, CDs. CDs <laughs> are now paying 4.5% on CDs with a $500 deposit. This higher interest rate can be a self-fulfilling prophecy and could actually in itself cause the stock market to drop lower because when rates are this high, you have all these hedge funds that are now um, can buy these T-bills. Some of them even buy these treasury bills on leverage because it's a marginable um, security and you know they're able to get a much higher rate even than their 5%. But, um, you know, and, and for that reason, they, they choose not to buy stocks. And without a lot of these institutional investors buying stocks, you're not going to get a rally. You know, the market can't rally without large ins institutional participation in the market. And, you know, these institutions are getting good rates right now for, for these bonds. And for that reason, um, I think there's actually a lot of merit into what Bank of America has said. One other thing I kind of want to point out, although I am a day trader, I tend to day trade off of margin. Most of my money always sits in SPY and against the margin, I usually day trade. The point I'm trying to make right now is these bonds are also marginable securities. I am not going to put 100% of my money into U.S. Treasury bills or something like that because I think rates can still go higher. But... Um, my long-term investment <laughs> might actually start being to start in accumulating more bonds and while I continue to day trade against that margin. For the, for the time being, I'm staying focused on, on trades, names that are going to be heavily affected by the rise in interest rates. I think even a good investment or a good trade 
might be shorting Tesla. Although it's a very big name with a huge market cap, uh, they need to take on some debt in order to build all these gigafactories and all, all these investments they're making. Rates go higher. Their growth is going to slow down. And that, in theory, should affect its stock price. I watch the price action of Tesla daily. I day trade this stock daily. And although it had a very powerful bounce around 170, it had a powerful bounce. It really struggled this week to get above 200 and it didn't close above 200, I believe, a single day. I think, um, and obviously Tesla is a name you have to cover your losses very quickly. But if you look at the chart here, I think there's still room for this thing to fall. I think Netflix is actually another one that might actually be a good short when the interest rates are higher. Um, having said that, short term, <laughs> Netflix is actually on my list of stocks to watch for a swing trade because it is having quite a powerful rally. And I'm, I do not short stocks while they are rallying the way Netflix has rallied. And obey the technicals if it starts to rally the way Netflix is rallying right now. Netflix had quite a rally the past two days. It, um, I think it, it might even be able to continue to rally. But it's another name that I was, um, I was looking at as a potential interest rate play. And the reason I know this is um, about two years ago when I was looking at Netflix bonds, they were selling a junk bond for about a 7% interest rate. Um, and so I know Netflix is a company that does need access to credit in order to finance all the projects that they, um, that they have going on. This is one of the things I look at when I'm shorting stocks. I don't think I'm going to wake up one day and Netflix is going to be $700 a share. Uh, I think there, you know, there will be time if I'm wrong on the trade, there will be many spots in between for me to cover. Um, and, and for that reason, I, I like it as a potential short, just not right now, because because momentum has been on its side uh, for, for a little bit of time. What I want to talk about are a few other names that maybe are a little bit less bearish. Take a look at NVIDIA and AMD. And NVIDIA is another name that I'm looking at daily. And this is, I think, how we're going to have to make money going forward in the market. I am not the greatest swing trader in the world, but I think you're going to have to find individual names and place some bets in on them with size. It's had quite a run in the last few months, shrugging off any negative sentiment. And I think of all the tech companies, they have not announced any layoffs. So NVIDIA is doing really well. AMD has mounted quite an aggressive comeback since its October low uh, from 60 to, to $97 a share. And um, Sai, uh, AMD is your baby. I mean, you know, you made a lot of money off of this, this stock alone. I had AMD stock from when it was below $2 a share. I think I have some cost basis in at $1.93. I've held it very long time to get this return though. AMD blew up a couple years ago because they came out with a better product than Intel. But a lot of their growth beyond that has been just Intel making mistakes left and right. Because um, this is a cyclical business. If Intel comes out with something right now that'll blow AMD away at a cheaper price, which is what AMD did to Intel a few years ago, um, this stock is going to suffer. And Intel is going to be the one to rise. So in a way, it's possible to look at Intel and do what I did with AMD, but you need to find out the bottom of Intel and when are they going to come out with the next product that blows the market away. But anyway, this isn't this isn't about bragging about your return side. I just wanted to point out AMD is having quite a momentum run. And I had several day trades on this stock this week um, just because it was like a huge momentum play this week. Uh, so and, and th that's that's kind of my point right now. You have to really watch momentum. Um, I want to talk about a few other names that I'm watching as swing trades. I think other people can kind of uh, look into this as well over the course of the week. Uh, Coinbase is another one where it had this huge rally in March from about like uh, $50 a share. It shot up to 80 this week. And a lot of that was just um, was due 
to Bitcoin um, rising to about 28,000. And then it had this massive, massive, massive drop down to like 66. Having said that, it is actually still a very good day trade. I'm not saying buy it. I'm not saying buy it as an investment, but I think it's worth looking at definitely from the purpose of a day trade, potentially for momentum. Let's see how it responds um, next week. It has a huge gap that may get filled next week. And for that same reason, I'm going to talk about Square here. But it had this huge drop. I think a lot of this had to do with uh, cryptocurrency market because Square is also exposed to cryptocurrency. Uh, Square had a day where it, it was, you know, I remember seeing it at $80. And then out of nowhere, it dropped down to $60 a share, down to 59 And it uh, might fill the gap next week. Square is actually a name I could even see buying for the long term. I just don't want to give anyone advice what to buy for the long term. You could lose a lot of money trading stocks. Always remember that. Um, But these are names I'm personally watching at the very least. And then um, I'm also watching Shopify. Shopify is having a little bit of a pickup right now. It rallied well off its, um, you know, its October low of 30. Uh, shot up to 50 and then kind of dropped back a little bit. I'm kind of curious where Shopify is going uh, as well as Twilio. So those are some names I've been I, I've been watching. Twilio, the reason I'm watching is they're laying off quite a, quite a bit. That usually uh, is a huge catalyst for the stock. And Twilio um, dropped as low as $45. It's kind of bounced back to $61. Um, right now, it looks like if, if I were to guess what's going to happen from the charts, I think there's a potential it could bleed out, but it's it's a name, a bleed out, meaning I think it could continue to just drip a little bit lower, but let, let's wait and see on this name. It's a name I recommend other people paying attention to uh, for the purpose of trading. All right, so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is usually where the action is, and a lot of times action is also determined by the earnings calendar. So I pulled up this upcoming week's earnings calendar. Let's go over day by day what I think might be the biggest trade of the day. Monday looks like a wash except for Carnival Cruise. Honestly, it hasn't been the greatest trade in some time, but CCL is one I'm looking at. On Tuesday, oh, Lululemon and Micron are probably the two big names I'm looking at. They're both very... Micron especially is a great tech name, kind of similar to AMD and not necessarily um, in the exact same space, but in the chip sector, uh, Lululemon makes uh, some very overpriced um, garments and things like that. McCormick can be a trade, but if you wanted to focus on two on Tuesday, Lululemon and Micron, there's a good chance these trades are going to bleed into Wednesday. And thank goodness for that. Actually, paychecks can be a good trade. I take that back. Paychecks on Wednesday can be a good trade at times. Thursday, we have skills. Um, Skills is probably the only one that used to be a trade, but skills stock has basically crashed um, beyond belief. That was that was in Kathy Wood's portfolio for some time. I think Kathy Wood's actually sold it at a huge loss, but somehow avoided a much larger loss on that name. So skills is kind of one you can maybe look at for Thursday, but um, honestly, probably still maybe trade the Micron Lululemon paychecks names from earlier in the week. Um, BlackBerry was once a target of Wall Street bets. I think that action is probably not going to be there, but if you really wanted another name to trade on Thursday, look at BlackBerry. Yeah, that, that's all I have for earnings. So hopefully I have kept this video a little bit more concise than last week, a little bit more on topic and maybe easier to follow. Let me know how I did in the comment section below. I am trying to keep this relatively short, but also dense with information that you will find useful. Um, Other than that, good luck for the upcoming week. Stay safe and don't lose all your money. I just want the money, 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 money.